In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create risk objects using CBR analysis. Risk objects support the intelligence preparation of the environment that's in accordance with the sensitive site reconnaissance as described in the ATP 3.8.1. They allow operators to identify weapons or facilities that could cause an accidental or deliberate release within the area of operations. So on the map already, you can see displayed there are a couple of risk objects. These are indicated by these triangle symbols here. And depending on which objects you place in, then you'll get a different type of symbol. Please be aware that nuclear and radiological are the same symbol. You've also got chemical, toxic industrial chemical and biological. Like I said, these risk objects allow you, as the operator, to identify any potential hazards or releases that may come from any of these risk objects. So we've got a couple here, so let's just have a quick look at one or two of them, just to show you um, what they're like. So we've got one down here that is on an airfield. And again, we can open this up by double clicking inside the icon that we've created. So if I double click onto there, you can see there's the uh, risk object report and we'll go through that. But part of the attachments, you can see that we have some fuel and we've placed that down as a potential risk. We also like I said, we can have uh, enemy weapons, delivery weapons, whether they be biological, chemical, or in this case, nuclear. So again, you can place them depending on the information that you receive. I have to open up this one. So we've got this from our intelligence um, capability. And again, we've got a picture indicating that we've got a cruise missile type delivery system that can deliver a nuclear weapon. But again, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be this. It could be anything from a high-end delivery means such as this or all the way down to maybe an improvised rocket device that has the potential to deliver into an airfield or an airbase or a naval facility or wherever it may be. So just cancel on that. And if I um, go back and then show the whole map again. So some of these uh, risk objects can be created before you actually get into the area of operations if possible. Others may be created while you're in there as you receive more information uh, about the area in which you're operating. So like I said, what we're going to do now is just create or show you how to create a risk object. And this can be done in two different ways, as with most of the reports that you can do inside CBR analysis. You can either go to the shortcut icon that will take you to the risk object database. You can click onto this caution like sign here, or you can go to view and go to risk objects from here doesn't matter which way so we can click on to there that will then open up the risk object database and you can see there are our four risk objects already in there and we can create a risk object from here by clicking on to one of these uh, create icons depending on what we wish to create whether it be nuclear weapon biological chemical toxic industrial chemical or radiological the other way that we can do it, um, if we don't want to create from the database directly and we know the exact position and we've got a decent enough map in this case we have, then we can go directly and take that information directly from the map. So we have received information and um, document and some pictures that relate to Bcoy one in here, they've sent a patrol out and they've found some drums, um, suspect drums around the back of this building here. So what we can do 
So we can zoom in and we're just for the benefit of this demonstration or example, we're just going to say that the drums have been found at this grid position here. So we can right click and then we can create our risk object directly from the map. So if we click on to create chemical, because that's what we're going to do for this particular example, and then our risk object report will come up. It defaults to the risk object uh, main page. Then we have options, then we have local notes, then we have a checklist that is particular to this risk object. So depending on what the facility or whatever the risk object is, you may have a separate checklist. It works independently from the standard checklist that you can have in CBR analysis. It's just for this risk object and you can also have attachments and that again is covered in a different tutorial about how to place attachments in or use attachments. So we'll go back to the main risk object page. You can see it's already filled out the position of where um, these drums have been found and we can then place in whatever our national or operational procedures are of how we should mark this up for identification means and for the name of the risk object. You can see that both of these fields are mandatory and we need to place something in. So I'm just going to go EIH to for an environmental industrial hazard and then I'm just going to create a number for it and then in here I'm just going to do suspect uh, drums ah. I shall do it this way so you can see you can have um, caps uh, locked or unlocked so it's like free text in there description again that's just free information more information that relates so we could say I don't know or whatever we want to place in. Who found them? So we can uh, place that information in. And who is controlling it? Again, these aren't mandatory, so it's not a necessity to fill them in unless you uh, have that information just going to place in a date time group um, again if you have an address you can do that and then you have three options you can combine some options together um, it defaults to the safety exclusion zones that are inside um, the ATP 3.8.1 and these exclusion zones are for operational commanders so that they can dictate uh, safety exclusion areas around a facility. Um, so if the location of the source is defined and then no release has occurred, a commander can establish a minimum safety exclusion zone of one kilometre. Um, again, if the toxic industrial material or chemical is 100% no, and then a commander can choose to select a safety distance that is set inside the emergency response guide. But commanders should attempt to avoid encampments of mobile units within three uh, kilometers and fix semi-permanent or permanent encampments within 11 kilometers. So those are like the three distances, one kilometer, three kilometers and 11 kilometers. So if you have this tick, indicated in the report, those three distances will be automatically placed around the risk object in a purple dotted line. So it's entirely up to you um, as the operator or an advice from your defense advisor or commander as to what you want to use, whether the safety exclusion zones um, or place in your own hazard range or just put an outline around um, the area. 
of interest. We're just going to place down a hazard area for now, so I'm going to say um, 250 meters. Like I said, there's uh, lots more information on um, safety exclusion zones within the ATP 3.8.1. Then, once you've finished the top area, underneath you have the ability to place in 25 different release scenarios that may may not happen. So you'll be presented with the first one you can place in, then using the scroll down the side, the same as what you would do with a CBRM4 report. Uh, when you're placing in sensor readings, you can just keep on clicking down up to 25 different options that you can have. That could possibly be just one material that you found and then placing in different options if there was a small, medium, large, extra large release, if that release was during the day or at night, um, or if it was on fire. Or your 25 different options could be multiple different materials that have been found or the worst materials that have been found that you want to indicate. So there is a different variety of information that you can place in as the operator. Um, we're just going to place the one in, so we're just going to say it's suspect drums. And again, you can see that it is case sensitive. Then underneath, um, it is slightly different to previous versions of CBR analysis. Um, previous versions of CBR analysis indicated exactly the same as what was on the other reports as into the sets. Okay, but in this version, that information has been changed. So golf is now delivery and, and so forth. So we have delivery, release and status and material. And that is to give it a more uh, civilian type feel so that if you are dealing with civilian authorities on marking up or identifying um, intact facilities within your area of operations then at least a civilian authority organization can have an understanding possibly of the information that you have received from them or you're going to send to them. Okay, So for delivery we can place in that it's going to be observed Again, I'm just quickly filling information in just to give you an example. And we will go generic storage container. And if they were all to release, we, um, we're going to say it's going to be large. And it will go on the surface. And in this case, we haven't been told what type of uh, material because there's no markings physically on these drums. So we are going to go for toxic industrial chemical. Okay. So from the pick list, we're going to select toxic industrial chemical. We're not going to physically go to the ERG and attempt to select a uh, either an ID number or a material from the emergency response guide because we don't know what the material is that's in the drums. So it's going to be unknown. Then from this pick list, possibly we'll say it's liquid and we can place that in. Again, this information can be constantly changed as we go along. If we receive more information about these particular drums, then we can come back into the report and readjust at any time. And then we can place in local notes, like I said, a checklist if we want to place a checklist in, remembering it's exactly the same as um, our normal CBR analysis checklist. So we can insert, start at the top, and then we can place some information in. And once we've got whatever information in that we want as the first step that we want to carry out. If something was to happen at this risk object, we also have the ability to add additional information in here that relates to that first step. Okay, So we can place some 
information in here if we wish. Again, we can copy and paste that from another document if we have that information and then just place it in there. And we can carry on and do as many steps as required. So, but again, we can take that out and just place in this case. Um, so if we insert to the bottom and then just go and then again you can see on the right hand side you can place in additional information that corresponds with step two. Then we have attachments. If we want to add an attachment we can do that. So we'll just import one in. We have been sent a picture um, so we will place that picture in oh, maybe you won't place the picture in <laughs> since it's going directly from there we'll have to do it from file and then browse that way I actually thought I had a rich text picture but obviously I didn't so we'll just do it this way and we've got a picture there and then we'll go OK and if we open that up there we go so we've placed that in so we've got everything in that we need as far as um, this report is concerned so we've now created our uh, risk object so all we do now is just go OK to accept that report and then it's placed down onto the map and then from there you can see our exclusion zone that we have placed around which is 250 meters around this particular risk object that we've identified and placed onto the map we can adjust the size of our risk objects uh, symbols if we think they're too big we can bring them down by going onto the map toolbar onto the change visibility templates and icons click onto there and then we can bring it down and make them smaller if we wish and go close okay so that is how to create a risk object report inside CBRN analysis.